Nigerian separatist leader Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Igbo, is being interrogated by officials in Benin. On Monday, he and his wife were arrested by Interpol at the airport in the capital, Cotonou, while trying to flee to Germany. Igbo has been on the run since July 1st, when Nigeria's Secret Service raided his home for allegedly stockpiling arms. Igbo became the target of a criminal investigation for organizing protests calling for the secession of his Yoruba tribe in Nigeria's southwest region. The protests followed a series of deadly attacks on his community, allegedly by Fulani herdsmen from northern Nigeria. His arrest is the latest in a series of government crackdowns on dissidents. Last month, Namdi Kanu, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, a secessionist group of ethnic Igbos in southeast Nigeria, was arrested in Kenya and extradited to Nigeria. But Britain is demanding explanation from the Nigerian government about how Kanu, a British citizen, was arrested. Kanu's trial resumes at the federal court of Buja on Monday. He was charged with treason terrorism and illegal possession of firearms in 2015, but he jumped bail and fled the country two years later. Rembi Adekoya teaches politics at the University of York. He's an expert in identity politics and Africa's developmental issues. He joins me from Sheffield, UK. Thanks a lot for joining us. Remy, is the growing call for secession in Nigeria a symptom of an unresolved problem? Or are the people just overwhelmed with the pervasive insecurity and a lack of prospect in the country? So the calls for secession are essentially the consequence of the failures of the Nigerian state, or the failures, even more broadly speaking, of the Nigerian project. Insecurity is just one major problem in Nigeria. It's a huge problem, of course, because we're talking about people's lives, and at the end of the day, that is what is most important. But there's massive corruption. Nigerian economy is in shambles. I mean, un the unemployment rate officially is at 33 percent, and so most probably, you know, it's more in the 40s. Uh, and so, you know, there's so many problems in the country, things are simply not working. And, you know, when things are not working, then people start looking for other solutions. And because Nigeria is such an ethnically diverse country, it's a colonial project. At the end of the day, people were forced together by the British colonialists um, uh, a while ago. Then, you know, people come up with, uh, and people have strong ethnic identities in Nigeria. And so people now come up with this solution and say, oh, you know, maybe we'll be better off on our own, since this Nigerian project is clearly not working. But is that really the solution? And how viable is that idea, even? Essentially, Nigerians are stuck between a rock and a hard place. There are really no good solutions here. You know, continue with the Nigerian project. Apart from hope, what other realistic proof do we have or evidence do we have to suggest that the Nigerian project can work? It hasn't really worked since 1960. And there's nothing on the ground to suggest that anything is going to change anytime soon, because the problems in the country are so deep-rooted but, of course, the question then becomes, what's the alternative? Okay, do we split up? If we split up, how exactly would that work? Like you see, there's so many ethnic groups in Nigeria, it could really be messy, and it could end up in bloody conflict. And obviously, nobody wants that. Nobody wants a Congo-like scenario. We've seen what happened, what happened in Congo, and up till today, the country hasn't been able to put itself back together. And so there's no good solutions here, to be honest with you. You know, it's, it's the job of a politician to... to to inspire hope in people, to give people hope. But it's the job of a political analyst like myself to give people reality. Mm. And the reality is that there are no good solutions. We can only hope for the least bad solutions. So here's a suggestion from many of Nigerian elites. They're asking for restructuring, basically. They're saying that let's just try out radical federalism. Do you think it's worth a shot? It is worth a shot, like you say. Since, you know, in the first republic in Nigeria, in the early independence years, there was, you know, it was a strongly sort of a federal, a regionalized system. And essentially, you know, the regions were not doing too badly. And so there was significant development at the time. And so it is worth a shot, definitely. I mean, it's better than escalating into a bloody, into a bloody conflict. It is worth a shot. Can the Nigerian government keep the country united by cracking down on people like Sunday Igbo and, uh, and uh, Kanu? So the Nigerian government cannot keep the country united by cracking down on dissidents. But the decision-making process of the people running the country looks in this way. They think to themselves, OK, what are our alternatives? Do we sit back and let these, uh, let these uh, secessionists gain support, which they are doing, as we see? Their message is becoming more and more popular. More and more people are saying, yes, we need to break up the Nigerian state. Or do we crack down on them forcefully? 
And their option, they go for the second option and say, look, the only way we actually keep this thing together is by cracking down on them forcefully. Fine, we may not bring real unity, but at least we may prevent the country from breaking up. And so again, day two, if we're being honest about it, are in between a rock and a hard place. And they too have no good, there's no good, um, uh, they, no good solutions on the table for them, really. So they've chosen the second option, which at least will sort of maintain some sort of order for the short term. What is the alternative to secession? What is the way forward in your... So the, the alternative to secession, like we said, is to try a truly federal system. So a system in which really the regions are given significant powers and enough autonomy to try to be able to forge their own path while still keeping together some powers at the center and still trying to keep together the Nigerian project. And let's see how that works. You know, we can try that for 10 years and see the results. And, you know, if there's some positive results, then okay, fine, you know, let's continue with it. If there are no positive results, then really keeping together a nation just for the sake of keeping it together, when all we have is the perpetuation of poverty and insecurity, that really doesn't make much sense, you know, to what end? Premier Adekoya, a lecturer at the University of York and an expert in the politics of identity. That's Africa Matters. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.